Hello, and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And today we're talking about something that has definitely been brought on by my time in uh, the US of A. And I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about cruisers. <laughs> and how I, I finally get them. Um, because obviously, like, you know, I know, I know people are going to be saying, but, but Miguel, you are on your Honda Magna, and that's a cruiser, and it, and I mean, you'd be right. You'd be wrong, but you'd be right. It is a cruiser, absolutely. It is also a muscle, muscle cruiser, though. So, I mean, this thing has a like, pretty good lean angle. Um, it has, it has... I mean, it has power, like, like I just showed you. This thing, this thing goes, and it doesn't matter how old this bike gets, it is always going to be up there with, like, you know, bikes that are going to be fun and fast on the road, because it just, it was just built right. When Honda did this one, they did it right. But anyway, this is not a video about the Honda Magna, because obviously I've done many videos about the Honda Magna. This is a video about big, chunky, heavy boys big cruisers big heavy cruisers and I, I mean for the longest time i never really considered them it's not really a bike i was ever like yeah okay i, I uh, you know i can see myself wanting to ride one of those i can see myself wanting to own one of those and you know shout out here to hatter hatter is a, a long time supporter of the channel we were actually talking about this the other day not the other day the other week and i think he's been here since he's been talking to me like on a video lee basis since I released my fourth video ever. I appreciate you, Hatter. You're, you're a good man. Um, but, where was I? Oh yeah. So basically, you know, recently in America, I got to try out the uh, Softail Slim. And I also got to try a Yamaha Striker. Now obviously the Striker, I do think that it could have done with a little bit more power. Okay, that's, but that's personal opinion. You know, there's a lot of options out there um, for people. It, it, you, do, you definitely don't need all of that power uh, that I would like it to have, but it's a very comfortable bike. You know, I was, I, was, I was always unsure about, you know, where they'd fit into my kind of riding style and, you know, my, my life with motorbikes. Because even, even this, this bike, which um, is, it's gonna be uh, an admission that I know a lot of people have called me out, whoa. We might have to go home. I just got a big old slippy move from the back, and I'm not sure is that the wheel bearing. I checked them fairly recently, but this bike hasn't been out in a month. Eh, three weeks, because I was in America. I wonder if that tire is really soft, or is the bear are the bearings gone? Because the bearings could be gone or going, but that definitely didn't feel good. So we'll take the way the longer way home here and. Nice and slow and we'll talk about it anyway. <laughs> I'm making a video, damn it, so you're just gonna get a really short loop into Kilkenny. I apologize, I did have a kind of a route planned out, but I'll, uh, I need to stop and have a look at that. We'll check it. I know where I can stop safely and not have people looking at me. It doesn't feel like a wheel bearing though. Maybe my tire's just soft. I checked the front tire. The front tire usually goes down. The rear one usually does not, but maybe that was uh, a stupid decision on my part. Uh, probably was. Or maybe I just got oil on the tire, who knows? Anyway, so basically, like I was saying, for the longest time I didn't really get the big cruiser thing, but then I tried them, like I said, and now I get them. They definitely have a place. And I, I had her, I had tip to you, sir. Um, you were you were you were correct. You were correct. Um I do it's it's a weird one, right? Because I mean the bike that I currently have that I feel is in the place of where a big cruiser would be is the CBF. And the thing is, it's kinda, it kinda comes down to which one do you want? Do you want the likes of the Honda CBF where you have, yeah, it's definitely the tire soft, I'd say. Where you have a situation where the bike is still a sportier ride if you, if you want it to be. Um, you don't, you're not going to get that with the cruisers. I mean, there doesn't... There doesn't seem to be any play there. I wonder, did it just slip? Maybe it's, maybe it's just cold or something. I don't know. 
not seeing any movement. So what you're looking for, if this happens to you, you're looking for the, the wheel, the tire moving, you know, like side to side. I'm not seeing that. And like I said, I did check them pretty recently. Actually off the bike, but I might pop that off and check it anyway. Um, tire doesn't seem soft or anything. Maybe there was just oil on the road. Okay, anyway, not to worry. Um, we'll take we'll take a different routing. So yeah, basically in my current stable, the definite competitor for a big... Yeah, that feels fine. The competitor for a big chunky cruiser is the CBF. I'm unsure is it something that I'd ever, you know, change for something that isn't as do everything um, as it. But the thing about it is I have never, like I rode 130 miles with the Yamaha Striker. And I can say I have never done that and thought, hey, that was absolutely 100% fine. My tuckish, my tuckish is all good. You know, and that, that kind of impressed me a lot. I do, I get it. <laughs> I know this. I, I get it. The comfort is really nice on them. Um, you know, the, the thing, the one thing that I didn't really like is the Softail Slim obviously being a... There's an old church, one of the many churches in Kilkenny. The Softail Slim being a kind of a big chunky Harley, you know, you'd expect it... I expected what I got, to be honest, because it had a, it had kind of apes on it. Or I, don't, I wouldn't call them really tall apes, but they were still apes. And, um, I mean, that was something that I didn't think would be, you know, super comfortable to use. Uh, from a, a handling perspective, and they weren't really. They were definitely not. Now we're not going to spark here because it's a disabled spot, but we can we can pause here. So this is a really old um, cathedral in Kilkenny. It's called Canis's. Uh, the round tower. You can actually still go up to the top of that, which is really cool. I might actually try to do it for a video someday. And the thing, I don't know what Anglican Episcopalian means. But what I do know is, back in the day, this was a Catholic church, right? Now, when Cromwell invaded, um, he kind of took this, and he actually stabled his horses inside it, which some people kind of still would not enjoy that about um, about Cromwell. I just think he was a bit of a dick. Um, but that, that was something that, you know, at the time, I, I, I'm not sure how the story went. I can't remember from history history class. We had a really good history teacher. He was an old guy. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but he was a legend. Um, and I listened to him because he had... He, you know when someone has a real interest in something, it's just easier to listen to them. But basically, Cromwell came in. He broke all the stained glass windows that were there at the time, and he stabled his horses inside it. So I believe the Catholic Church went, you know what, have it, because you kind of you spoiled it on us, to be honest, Ali not sound but um and that was that was where it went so you can still go in there there's lots of memorials and stuff in there it's it's actually a really cool place to visit um i don't know why i took the turn up here but i did and it's really worthwhile going up to the top of the round tower but the thing that i don't know would i ever be able to uh, countenance would i ever be able to come to terms with is having having a bike that had such little turning rate or turning angle or lean angle there we go as that soft tail slim i mean i scraped the floorboards on it so 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 quickly um which isn't a problem in on of itself it just kind of sucked a bit because i mean number one was my bike so i didn't really want to be scraping the dude's floorboards but number two as well like scraping it's cool and all but it is it's a literal hard stop and obviously if you have a hard stop it's affecting your handling and I think it was due to the apes but the thing turned in like mm, poo it didn't turn in very well at all and to your left there is um, where the brewery used to be the brewery got moved it got sold and moved so that's uh, Diageo moved it out of Kilkenny so you know Smithix uh, Budweiser I think Kilkenny used to be brewed here it no longer is um, which to be honest I think is a pity but such is life that's the way it goes and uh, yeah, so I don't know, like this bike, I really, I really enjoy how it handles, you know, you can absolutely fling it into corners, um, which I definitely didn't feel like I could do on the soft tail slim. And the Yamaha Striker felt a lot like this, it, it felt quite flicky, and it's a lot heavier, it's a lot, lot heavier, but it still was quite, 
an agile bike um, for what it was. The one thing I don't get, right, is this bike is from the late 80s, right? It's when it was designed, it's when it was built. And it has a single disc on the front. The soft tail slim was definitely not designed and built in the 80s. Well, the one I was, was riding wasn't built in the 80s anyway. Whether it was designed back then or not, who knows? I know it definitely shares some, you know, design pieces. But it still has a single brake disc on the front, a single brake caliper on the front, which it just doesn't make sense to me. Is it Kenny Castle to your right there? Beautiful, isn't it? How are we? But it's never, it's never made any sense to me. The same with the Yamaha Striker. Yamaha Striker, single disc on the front. It's completely nonsensical to do that in the modern day and age. Like, how, honestly, how much extra does a brake disc and an extra brake caliper cost you? And a little bit of a better brake master cylinder. It doesn't make any sense. It really annoys me, actually, that, you know, manufacturers are still doing that because it just, it's, it's nonsensical. You know what I mean? It's like, it's something you do, you save a little, little bitty bitty bit of money but like for what reason who like i don't know i don't get it i don't get it uh, in front of us there is the butler gallery and um, they recently did this up and, and and moved it on oh no the cat's gone there was these cool kilkenny cats uh, kilkenny cats is like the nickname of the local g hurling team and there was cats around kilkenny that you could go see they were like um it was like modern art or something but they were actually cool some of them were cool uh, if I have a picture one on this phone, because I broke my other phone, I will throw it up on screen now. Um, there's also a really nice cafe in there. I've eaten there a few times. Um, highly, highly recommend it if you're down around here. And you can park your bikes between the plant pots if you're brave enough. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that too, because um, it just makes sense to do it, really. You know, makes sense. It make Why wouldn't you park your bike between the flower pots and not take up a space here because also if you want to use a parking ticket you bloody well can't on a bike um it's a ridiculous idea because someone could just take it it's i, I don't know why people think that it's it's possible to pay for parking with a bike in the world we live in people just steal things because people are shit some people most people are actually sound i like i like most people most people um as evidenced by my recent trip which there's a video coming on that trip where i met the people um most people are pretty good most people are pretty good but yeah basically what i was trying to get at with this whole cruiser thing and i know this became a ramble because i'm just tipping around kilkenny and it's, a, it's actually a really nice evening here really nice evening i brought the weather back from florida you're all welcome but um yeah, the things that impressed me about them, I suppose, was the kind of the all-day comfort, even on the soft tail slim. And it was it was funny because I met Flipna in um, in the Dirty Shame, and I was talking to him, and I said, you know, I have a soft tail slim rent to to rent tomorrow, and he said, uh, dude, that's a small bike, and I was kind of half worried then, but I mean, I don't think anyone realizes how small this bike is. This bike is small. And it feels small now that I've been on those ones. But I still love it to pieces, so I don't care. So it, it, it's a big bike. The Striker is the same. It's a, it's, a, it's a big displacement, but small power bike. But it felt a lot bigger and was, um, you know, amazing for all day comfort. So it's, it's something that I didn't really ever get. And to be honest, I still don't really get for Ireland because Ireland is so bendy and twisty. Our roads aren't like America. But over there, they're big ass wide roads. They're kind of long, straight sections to get to the nicer, smaller, windier sections. Um, yeah, I completely, completely, 100% get um, a big, comfy cruiser. It just, it makes sense. There's a really cool, uh, I think you call it a mural. Well, wall art, anyway, down here on the wall. It's a big old elephant, and I like it a lot. There it is, big elephant. Um, so it, it, good job. That's not your side of the road. <laughs> now we're going to see the cathedral from this side. Just to show you. No way I came back this way. There it is though. It's cool, isn't it? 
That's probably one of the best views of Kilkenny coming across that bridge and seeing the cathedral. The one thing I don't get is a uh, fuel range. Like this bike, this bike only has a tank that'll get you 100 miles or 160 kilometers. And that's not a lot. <laughs> and I mean, it was the same with the Striker. I mean, the thing I don't understand is, you know, you have, for instance, the BMW GS, and it has a tank on the, the GSA, sorry, the GS Adventure. Um, they have a, like a tank that's about a billion liters and will bring you for about 3,000 million kilometers. I think it's actually 34 liters. I'm not sure the range, but 34 liters is a lot. Uh, for the Americans in the audience, that's nearly 10 of your gallons. I think it's about 9, we'll call it 9, we'll say 9 gallons. Because um, your, your gallon is 3.75 liters, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. And then a UK gallon is uh, 4.51 liters. And then sane people just use liters, so it's a 34 liter. It's a 34 liter tank. <laughs> But that's the one thing I didn't really understand about any of them is, you know, they're these big, heavy bikes that aren't very maneuverable, that aren't overly nimble, but they have a kind of a crap fuel distance mileage thing. The, the ones I rode, the ones I rode, I haven't done a huge amount of research into tank sizes, but I would really hope that the likes of the Indian Challenger and stuff have a, a much bigger fuel range. Uh, looking at the likes of the Road King and stuff, I don't think they do, because they seem like low profile tanks like this one. Why not beef it up, you know? Give yourself a big beefy, mean-looking tank. Sling it under the seat. It's not going to change the handling characteristics of the bike that much because, you know, they, it, they're not they're not race bikes. So why not load it up? What's an extra 10 kilos or, you know, 22 pounds? That, you know, a litre of fuel weighs about a kilo. Okay, yes, you have the extra containment and all that, but I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. I don't get it. Let me know what you think. Would you like to see, like, a lot more fuel in big-ass cruisers if you own a big-ass cruiser? I just think it makes sense. It's funny because for a lot of people like myself, and, you know, one of the, one of the long-time viewers of the channel as well, Stephen, who I, who I would talk to a lot on Instagram and stuff, um, we have great chats about bikes in general and, and just other stuff too, but... Um, you know, for me, it's sometimes hard to kind of put together the fact that in my head you know the genres are of bikes are like sports tourers sports bikes and then in sports bikes you have super sports and super bikes and you know a couple of other things in between that have twins in them like the likes of the falco and stuff which would be the melee that's still a super bike i suppose technically but it's it's not really because it's a twin you know you have your your ultra bikes like the rsv4 and all that there's a lot out there you know the because a Jixxer 1000 isn't really comparable to a modern V4 Panigale, in my opinion. Um, you know, they, 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 need to, they need to upgrade that, but it's getting off topic. And a I, I will admit I am guilty of, for a long time, just being like, a cruiser is a cruiser. A big, air-cooled V-twin is a cruiser. That is not the case. They have just as many facets, just as many interesting bits, just as many details that, you know, I have, I am guilty of overlooking, and it's something and I'm definitely going to try to do more of is ride more and more and more bikes. And, you know, I think the Harley sounded absolutely amazing. It really, really did. And it felt amazing being up on it because it's such a distinct engine. And one that I'd never ridden properly on a road. And that was really, really cool. And then the Striker is the complete opposite. It's a very characterless engine, if that makes sense. It might be a lot better if you open up the breathing in the exhaust, but the, the actual engine itself, stock, didn't really have the soul that you'd want it. It was, um, I'm not gonna say dead, but a kind of a, an emotionless affair, whereas the Harley engine was not. Even, I'd say if the Harley engine had the stock exhaust on it, uh, you still it still would have felt different, you know what I mean? Between your legs or whatever else. And that, that, that matters, that matters. But then the Harley handled like uh, a gate, and the Yamaha handled really well. So, and I, <laughs> I, this is it. Kind of excites me a bit because, you know, I I love my bikes, and now I realise there's a lot. There's even more to love. I already did love love all of those bikes. You know, I liked Harleys and to look at and all that stuff, and they're cool. And I always wanted to ride one. Um, but I didn't know as much about them, not even half as much about them as I know about my Italian bikes, uh, Aprilia in particular, and Japanese.
just because the bikes I was looking at were always Japanese and Italian. And that was, that was just the way it was. I now understand why the big cruiser, the big comfy cruiser with bags on, I, I get it. For a long time I was like, but why would you not just buy X, Y, or Z? Why would you not just buy a sports tour? Why would you not just buy, you know, something else? I, I get it. I'm not saying I'd buy one over a sports store. I don't know, would I? Because I still, you know, one of the one of the uh, one of the guys I met over in Tampa and went for a ride with uh, Bueller. I'll put his I'll put his tag up on screen now. Jack, lovely, lovely guy. Uh, and I don't, all those people are lovely people that I met. Uh, really genuine, down to earth, normal people. Wouldn't catch them in a you know a nice slick suit, and I then I wouldn't be able to trust them. But. Uh, no, they were they were good people, good people. But Jack, anyway, you know he was out us, and everyone else had a, had a cruiser. Uh, there was two Indian Scouts, there was a Sportster, there was a Shadow 750. I think it was the Aero Q had. Really nice bike, and there was a Dyna, and then there was my uh, Softail Slim, and Jack had a Kawasaki. Uh, for, to us over here, it was a GTR 1000, but over there it's the Concours. And, you know, I, I, I completely, it was funny because, you know, like, if you're riding with a group of people like that, and you have that big old sport tourery bike, it would be very easy to just be like, you know what, I'm going to fall in with the rest. But I completely understood. I was like, he's still got the comfort, but he's got, he's got way more agility, and he's got way more, way more power just because he has that inline four, liquid cooled, revy engine in there made by Kawasaki, and Kawasaki, you're awesome. But then, uh, at the same time, I was able to really appreciate, you know, the fact that Spiff was on his Dyna. And that uh, the Dyna was a really cool bike. And, and that's something, actually, that I know this is, again, kind of off the topic of what I was supposed to be talking about in my own brain. But I love seeing that. I love seeing a mixed group of bikes out together because why do you all have to like the same bikes? You can still go for a ride together, you know what I mean? You, you can only go so fast on public roads for so long I mean we can all do little pulls and be like ha, your bike is slower than mine sucks to be you uh, I would definitely do that as well but at the end of the day you know you can all go off for a spin together you can all go have some food you can all enjoy it be out in the sun be out in the good weather go to nice places you know there's nothing stopping me I would I would happily go for a spin on this with any of my friends with sports bikes as well I, I have done that um, because I mean if they're decent people they'll wait for you if you fall behind anyway and me falling behind would be absolutely fine. Because I wouldn't expect people to completely slow down their spin for me either. But again, off topic. There's a really nice little lake down here on the right too. I, I have so many really nice loops I can do near my house. It's kind of it's kind of class, but that, that's really cool. That's a beautiful house. If you watch the channel and you own that, your house is magnificent. Well done you. If I win the lotto, I'll build something. Ah, I won't build something like it. I'll build a giant shed with sleeping quarters in it. I'll fill it with bikes and be happy forever after. Uh, so that's kind of it. Let me know what you think of all my ramblings um, in the comments, please. Let me let me know. I am interested to hear from you all, as always. Uh, little doggy. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Have you ever ridden a big comfy cruiser? If you currently ride a sports tour, is it something that you possibly consider swapping to a big comfy cruiser or are you more sportsy bikes for life? Uh, which, if you are, absolutely fair enough. Um, but, you know, let's all try not talk shit about each other's choices because at the end of the day, we're all on bikes. And we're all friends. So, yeah, if you watch, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, a very special thank you to all of my patrons. Um, I really do appreciate the support you're all giving me and I know I've missed a couple of videos in recent times um, Just a quick one on that. I am extremely busy with some work stuff I've also had some te technical difficulties around editing and whatnot um, When I flew back from America, I was really jet-lagged and really tired and When I went to work and came home, I just didn't have the energy to stay up and edit so I really but the thing is I really I, not one patron has ever messaged me to be like hey, what's going on? Why aren't you doing this? And I, I would understand that if someone was like, hey, you know, I, I patron you and I would like more videos, please. Uh, I would completely get that. I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. Um, you know, feel free to cancel it or whatever. But 
I think there's just a, there's a there's a group of really good people who do uh, who have stuck with me, and I do appreciate it. And thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, which is shaped like a V4, but doesn't sound like this when it beats. I wish it did. Anyway, adios. Outro crew. If if like I was to say to you, right, I won the lotto. You. I won the lotto. And I will buy you a bike. Any bike you want, the only rule is you have to keep it. For 10 years. You can buy other bikes, but you have to keep it. You can't sell it for money to buy more bikes, because I mean, I'd just be like, the most expensive bike on the planet, please, and I'm just gonna sell it and buy 10. But you're not allowed to do that. And I don't even want to know a particular bike, just what style, what genre of bike would you buy? Would it be a big comfy cruiser? Would it be something else? And why? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, real quick thing as well, the videos we have coming up on the channel is the trip to Wales. That's coming. That's going to be here soon. Uh, we're going to be talking about m new tech developments on bikes, uh, what I've seen reports of and what's in the works and why I think a lot of them are kind of pointless. Uh, we'll talk about that. There's also a video coming up on Tampa and going there and talking to some really fantastic people and uh, would I go back and stuff. And yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a lot more actually. There's quite, there's quite a lot more on the horizon. I just need to get the time to sit down and edit them. Uh, I know some people have reached out and been like, are you losing interest? No, uh, I am still very interested in a YouTube and doing it. Uh, it's literally just time at the moment and I do apologize. Um, but sometimes, unfortunately, real life kind of takes over and obviously my job kind of has to come first because that's how I earn money to live and survive. So yeah, that's probably a really long-winded explanation. And if you stuck with me this long, thank you very much, Outro Crew. You are the best, alongside the patrons, of course. Uh, a lot, I mean, most of the patrons are probably Outro Crew. I, you know, maybe. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, bye.